Okay, so uh, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, uh, I'd like to thank the Birdshot Uveitis Society for inviting me to speak here. And over the next 10 minutes, my, my hope or my plan is to try to convince you that the way in which eye examination is done, or the eye examinations that you're going to experience uh, over the next few years is, is going to radically change. And uh, in fact, we talk about reinventing the eye examination. Now, the technology that I think that will reinvent the eye examination is something that most of you will be familiar with. It's OCT imaging, or optical coherence tomography. Now, it's called tomographic imaging because it gives us image. Tomographic is like a radiological term for cross-sectional imaging. So it gives us cross-sectional images of our eye, and in particular of our retina. And this is a picture of my own retina taken with the, the Cirrus OCT system about seven years ago. So it gives us these cross-sectional images of our retina and other tissues, such as the choroid underneath the retina, with very, very high resolution. So it's almost like taking a biopsy of your eye, but in a non-invasive fashion. Now, OCT has revolutionized ophthalmology, uh, pretty much all branches of ophthalmology, because of the fact that it's so quick and easy and non-invasive to acquire the scans. So everybody can have an OCT scan done very easily. We even do OCT uh, commonly in our pediatric populations. So we have pediatric uveitis uh, clinics at, at Moorfields, and we do OCT scans probably sometimes more easily than we, we would examine them with, say, an indirect ophthalmoscope or some other, some other device. Now, we have been using OCT uh, to try to characterize patients with birdshot chorioretinopathy. And this is work that we first published in 2013, done with Alistair Dennison and uh, Professor Philip Murray and others, uh, where we looked, where we used very high resolution OCT to look at the retina and look at the choroid and describe novel features of birdshot to try and help us better understand the condition. And then more recently, in work that's been supported by uh, the, you know, the Birdshot Uveitis Society, we've been looking at ways to try and think of better, better ways to monitor uveitis and monitor birdshot and give us better ways to quantify uh, the, the fluctuations that occur in, in people with this, this condition. Now, as I say, OCT has revolutionized the way we diagnose and treat patients with retinal disease and uveitis and other um, ocular diseases, but OCT still has a number of limitations. Now, this is me uh, on the lower ground floor in Moorfields having an OCT scan done with the, the Spectralis OCT system from Heidelberg. Now, this image I've included because it shows some of the limitations that, you may, that may, you may not have thought of. So one of the limitations is that the devices are quite large and they're quite expensive. So they're not large like MRI scanner large or CT scanner large, but they're still big. And they're expensive, you know, they're probably, you wouldn't have much change from 100,000 pounds for a Spectralis uh, device. Again, not MRI scanner expensive, but still, but still uh, quite costly. The, another big limitation is that you need a third party to acquire the scans. So in other words, you need to have a medical photographer or a nurse or a healthcare assistant or a doctor who's been trained to acquire the scans to take them. So you can't take the scans yourself. You need someone else there. And a last limitation is the depth range of current OCT devices. So this device, the Spectralis, which many of you will have, which is one of our state-of-the-art devices, actually has a depth range of 1.9 millimeters. So it scans a very tiny area. Now it turns out that that's brilliant at looking at the retina, which is about a quarter of a millimeter in thickness. It's, it's amazing. But it limits other structures that we can, we can image in the eye. And image, and uh, limits our ability to look at the front of the eye, in the middle of the eye, for example. Now, the exciting thing is that there's a new type of laser called a vexel laser, which is, stands for Vertical Cavity Surface Emission Laser. And the exciting thing about that is it has a much greater depth range than conventional OCT. And it's a depth range of 40 to 60 millimeters. So four to six centimeters in depth range. 
Now, if you think about the actual length of a whole eye is, we'll say, about two centimeters, so we're potentially entering an era where we can talk about whole eye imaging with OCT. And so in a research settings, we already have whole eye OCT devices. And so this is a, an example of whole eye imaging from uh, Jim Fujimoto's lab in MIT, who are the people who originally invented OCT back in 1991. And so this is uh, an image of the eye uh, from the front with the eyelashes all the way through to the back with the retina that's taken a couple of seconds to acquire and uh, again, completely non-invasively. And what's exciting is that you can acquire this image set and then the doctor can drill down to any structure that they're interested in. So for example, if they're interested in the cornea, they can look at that. If they're interested in the iris or the pupil or the lens or the retina, they can drill down to that structure. Now, if I go back, actually, one thing that has eluded the people who develop this device is that they're only thinking in terms of the retina or in terms of the front of the eye because they think of retinal diseases like macular degeneration. What hasn't occurred to them, until we sort of brought it up, is that the whole of the vitreous is scanned with this. And so, of course, if the whole of the vitreous is scanned, that may give us a better way to monitor inflammation of the vitreous, vitreous haze, vitreous cells, vitritis. And a lot of our work is focused on that area. Now, the other advantage of these Vexel lasers is that they're smaller and more robust and more portable than conventional OCT devices, which use a spectrometer, which is costly and kind of fiddly to incorporate. Now, that means that we, the Fujimoto and others are also developing portable handheld OCT devices. And people in Austria and Germany and elsewhere in Ireland are working on these handheld OCT devices. Now, where we come in in the United Kingdom and where my research comes in is something called binocular OCT. And this is a model drawing of a binocular OCT device that we're currently developing. Now, binocular OCT is the brainchild of uh, my uh, collaborator um, from when, when I worked in Los Angeles, Dr. Alex Walsh. And Alex is, is a very unique individual because he's a retina specialist who's also a trained mechanical engineer from Stanford. And so he's kind of got a cool and unique uh, skill set. And so what he has done is he's set up a company to a startup to develop this binocular OCT concept. And so this is, a, it's called Envision Diagnostics, just a small startup. And this is an example of uh, binocular OCT imaging from this device showing imaging from the cornea at the front all the way through to the retina. And of course, what they don't show is that the, the vitreous is captured as well. Now, binocular OCT is actually more than just high resolution imaging of the eye. It has three unique features that I wanted to tell you about. The first feature is that it's binocular in design. So if you think of OCT scans that you've had done, they've all typically involved these devices, which are these large devices, which are on a kind of movable chassis, and the photographer aligns them with one of your eyes, takes the scan, and then moves the whole thing over and takes an image from the other, other eye. Now, binocular OCT means that basically you look in and you can align the device with your own eye. And so that means that you can acquire images from your own eyes without anybody else being there. So you don't need a photographer to acquire the scans. The second feature is that it's smart. And what that means is that when you look in, the screens on the device are like the screens of an iPhone or a tablet computer or an iPad or whatever you want to call them. And so they can display content to the user. So they c you could be looking into the binocular OCT device and you could, for example, if you're a child looking in, a cartoon could be playing. And unbeknownst to the child, long wavelength light, which is invisible to them, is being used to perform whole eye OCT imaging. Or other content, and, and uh, believe it or not, in, in some of these devices, I've seen like ads for pharmaceutical companies being played. So you could see an ad for Alluvian or something like that being, being played. Um, and then the last feature is that it's simultaneous. And so that means that unlike these old school devices which do one eye and then the other, it does both eyes at the one time. Now those features together mean that it can actually do a range of diagnostic tests and not just imaging. 
So it can do measurements of visual acuity and refraction and pupil measurements and actually uh, more than 10 different diagnostic tests. And what's exciting is that they can all be done by you on your own eyes without a third party being present. And many of these are functional tests like reading and color vision and Amsler and other tests. So why do we think that that's exciting? <laughs> well, this, well, I mean, this is perhaps not the, the, the most scientific reason why it's exciting, but if you think about it, even where we have effective treatments for certain conditions, like macular degeneration, where we have injections now that are very good, there's still a huge burden on people because they still have to come into the clinics and wait for hours in the clinics. Now, why do you wait for hours? Well, this is a picture that I took on my iPhone of one of the whiteboards outside a clinic in Moorfields. And I'm not really sure whether I'm meant to do that or not, but it says two to three hours. I'm not sure if they actually ever changed that number at that, that, that time. But uh, now part of the reason why people have to wait a long time is because we have a huge volume of patients. And particularly with uveitis, they're all really, really complicated. It's not in, a, in and out type situ situation. But also, as many of you will know, it's because the workflows in our clinics are inefficient. And let me see if any, any of you can recognize something like this. So you come along and you wait for the receptionist, and then you wait for the nurse to call you to put the drops into your eyes and to measure visual acuity. Then you wait to have your OCT scan done. Then you wait for the doctor to call you. When you see the doctor, the doctor says, they didn't do the right type of scan. I need you to go back outside and wait. And then he calls you again. And even when you finish with the doctor, you sometimes have to wait before you get your next appointment. So it's no wonder that you can sometimes spend a huge amount of time. So what we think is that if we automate large parts of the eye examination, that that, is, that has a huge amount of patient benefits. And we say when you automate an, an industry, you modernize the industry. And so uh, an example is banking. And I sort of think that ophthalmology is a bit, bit like banking in the 1960s or 70s. So if you had to withdraw a, te a, a tenor from the bank, you probably had to go and queue up and wait. But nowadays, you just go to the cash machine or you do it online. So we need to try and automate more aspects of ophthalmology so that you can spend more time talking to the doctor or the doctor can spend more time treating you and explaining all the intricacies of your disease. This is an example um, now, uh, of uh, the prototype binocular OCT device, the version one from uh, 2013. And just to show you automated measurement of visual acuity. And, and so what, what happens is that the you, you can't hear the sound, but what happens is um, that you look in and letters are presented and then you respond verbally and voice recognition software is used to say, to say what your visual acuity is. So it, it automatically generates that. Now, the other aspect, and I'm conscious that I'm, I'm running uh, out of time here, is that aside from automation, we think that this is gonna be better for patient care because it allows for quantitative analysis. And what do I mean by that? Well, this is again, a, a picture that I took of some handwritten notes of a patient with uveitis uh, attending Moorfields. And so it just sort of, I can maybe interpret this for you. Some of you may be familiar, but it says bilateral intermediate uveitis, not in any treatment, visual acuity much better today, anterior chamber deep and quiet, vitreous cells plus debris plus fundi, squiggle, squiggle, quiet, C4 months. So if, we ha if you have a, a disease as complex as uveitis, is it any wonder that we sometimes don't pick up subtle changes in disease when this is often the way that we're documenting the condition? And often, of course, in the NHS, you're gonna see different doctors in every time. And this is by no means the worst example. This is actually, I think, to me, perfectly legible uh, handwriting. So we need to move away from that. Now, we're starting to do that already in uh, retinal diseases where we give intravitreal injections. And in OCT, we can look at the changes pre and post treatment in fractions of a millimeter, fractions of a millimeter. But we need to do that for every aspect of the eye examination. So another example is pupils. Instead of looking at your pupil reaction with a pen torch and saying, is it, ab is it right, is it not right? We can use binocular OCT um, to do that. So this is what the person sees up here, and this is the reactions on the front of their eye, uh, the anterior segment OCT, and we can see real time the changes in the pupil. Of course, if you've got anterior uveitis, that's gonna be very, very interesting. 
So anyway, it gives us, it gives that we can do pupil measurements and then we can generate a huge volume of quantitative information. So for example, we can have the maximum, minimum diameter of each pupil, the velocity, the acceleration, and the latency of constriction of the pupil, generating huge amounts of quantitative data. And this is a measurement of eye movements with, with uh, binocular OCT. So the patient is asked to follow the cross, and then because we're monitoring the rotation of the globe with the front of the eye, we can actually do quantitative measurements of the eye movements, instead of saying, look at my finger, and follow my finger like so. Okay, so this is the last slide then. Uh, so the idea is that we want to take the slit lamp, I'm sure all of you have seen this. If you go to Moorfields, every cubicle has a slit lamp. And the slit lamp is a wonderful, wonderful device. But it's a technology that hasn't really changed all that much since it was first described by Gullstrand in 1911, more than 100 years ago. And so what we'd like to do is try to reinvent the way eye examination is done for the 21st century. And we think that binocular OCT can do that. Thank you very much.